welcome to Conversations with Writers. I'm Andy. I'm a writer and a writing instructor in higher education. And this is an educational YouTube series intended to catalog writing strategies and philosophies through conversation with other writers. Michael Don is the author of the short story collection, Partners and Strangers, published by Carnegie Mellon University Press in 2019. His short fiction and essays have appeared in journals such as The Washington Square Review, The Southampton Review, World Literature Today, Fictional International, and Southern Humanities Review. Michael is an assistant professor at George Mason University, and he co-edits Kikwe 2, a journal of East African literature. And this is my conversation with Michael. Hi. Hey. How, how are, are you? you? Hanging in there. Same. So how is Baby Days Part 2? It's uh, like everyone warned me, much harder than having one child, <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's a net gain, but everyone's been sick lately and you can probably hear my congestion. We're just trying to uh, live our best pandemic lives with two small children. <laughs> yeah, best pandemic lives. So what are you working on now and what motivated the project? So you've got Partners and Strangers, which was a fairly recent publication, but you've also got things that you're working on now that's new. Tell me about all this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, over the last couple of years, because of the the virus that we, we shall not name, I've kind of been scattered and I'm, you know, taking a lot of notes, a lot of note taking, working on revising kind of older stories that didn't make it into Partners and Strangers. So I kind of here and there am doing revisions. I've also found myself being drawn to writing a little bit more nonfiction. So I have some like short creative nonfiction essays going, a couple that I finished. And I don't know, I think it's like, I'm always kind of a person who, a writer who works on a lot of things at once. Like when I was working on Partners and Strangers over seven years, I was also working on other stories and you know started a novel draft but i think like the the pandemic has made me even a little more scattered with like less time less attention span so i think i'm just poking around in a lot of different areas <laughs> a lot of different spaces on, on my laptop but yeah i'm just interested in you know i think writing in a different genre like doing a little more nonfiction, has been liberating during just kind of the, you know a, a crazy moment in time. The stories that I'm working on, I have quite a few going, quite a few drafts finished and some that are kind of done done and some that need to be revised. But I'm really trying to figure out like which ones go with which ones and what projects I am actually working on. Sometimes I think I know like what the project is and then other times I'm like, no, this, these, this group of stories doesn't quite feel like it's going together. So some of the work I'm doing is just trying to like notice how my work is, my stories are connecting to each other or not connecting or what bridges need to be built to have a, you know, cohesive, another cohesive collection. You said that you're working on some nonfiction pieces. So what are those about and how are they connected? Yeah. So I recently published a very short essay <laughs> about my former barber in Boston who just had like very different political views than me. And we kind of came together over our love for 1990s basketball, the NBA. He's a big basketball guy. So am I. And so I just had these really interesting, sometimes fraught, tense conversations with him while he was cutting my hair. And because he had like a scissors, I was careful like not to argue with him to, you know, get into it too much. Sometimes it was just like, okay, <laughs> kind of scary when it's going right across your, your forehead. Then I found myself like, I, I have this other essay that, that I'm working on. So that one I, I published recently and this other one I'm working on that's kind of about my best friend who I've been best friends with since kindergarten, but there's also this basketball element to it as well. This kind of absurd basketball game that we invented that we made up 
during our lunch period in high school and that we've like continued into our adulthood and we just look like complete idiots doing it out on public basketball courts and the game is basically like we just fire up half court shots and we just alternate shooting half court shots and we have a name for ourselves and then there's an opposing team that sometimes we become like the globetrotters and the generals so it's this ridiculous thing and i'm like writing this essay that that's part of it but it's also kind of trying to look at the place that we came from our high school and there's some kind of issues of it gets into some deeper issues of race and structure and brought things too so nothing nothing's ever like light and fun but so that's another one i'm working on that also just happens to have like a basketball element to it and have you noticed any challenges transitioning between fiction and nonfiction? I think the main challenge is I'm really a fiction writer at heart. So it's like, oh man, I don't know what to do with this. Can I just start making shit up? <laughs> and if I start doing that, obviously, then I, I move it from my nonfiction folder to my fiction folder on my computer. But I, I haven't been doing that really. I've been I've been kind of using restraint and trying to work it out as as nonfiction. And so like the piece I was just talking about. I've hit kind of a, a block and I'm still trying to figure out what it's really about. I, I couldn't really articulate it right now because I don't really know. And so I'm just kind of waiting and I'll get back in there and I'll hopefully figure it out at some point. So yeah, I think the biggest challenge for me is just that tendency to be like, all right, now I'm going to make that sort of imaginative leap and just like make something happen, which I, I, I can't if I want to keep it as nonfiction. So. So what have you learned about yourself through writing both nonfiction and fiction? Yeah, I think I've learned quite a few things from from writing about myself. The first one is probably that I'm even maybe a, a little bit stranger than I thought I was already. <laughs> Just a little, like I think I knew I was a little bit of a strange person. I think that I've, you know, I've learned something about work habits and process that I, I'm a person who needs a lot of balance in my life. And I can't just sit down and do something for five hours in a day, or, or I'm not able to focus on one thing for a really long time. And so I write in kind of shorter, shorter spurts and need other things going on in my life to energize my writing. I think I've learned that I'm really interested in subtle, really subtle social moments or things that happen when interacting with other people that seem just very small, but could feel more meaningful as I find myself in my writing often fixating on these like little subtle things. Those are a few things I've learned about myself. I've learned that I continue to somehow think about basketball a lot which was like one of my first you know childhood passions as i was noting before as often that works itself into some of my writing so what is the role or responsibility of writing for you so what keeps you generating material why write that that i think that's like the toughest question for me um i've tried to answer i think i try to answer that question to myself every so often because i think as a writer you often are faced with that question it's kind of always looming a million people have said no one's asking you to write no one's making you write i think that that question is just kind of there all the time i don't know i've been writing from a really young age i've been experimenting with writing not like a dedicated writer but like when i had free time in fifth grade i was working on this really long story and then i was doing comics making stories through comics and writing song lyrics and a lot of that stuff and obviously as a kid I wasn't thinking about this but I think just in the most basic sense of telling various human stories what it's like to have a body and a brain and live in a specific place and have these specific experiences that also others can recognize I think I'm you know I'm really interested in just experimenting with language and possibility I often at 6 a.m. when I'm up with the the new guy, the new baby. I find myself, maybe in part because I'm really tired, I don't know what else to do, but I just find myself like singing to him and I always make up songs. And part of that is because I have a really bad memory for song lyrics, so I just can't remember actual songs, but I find it very liberating and 
amusing and fun to be able to experiment with language and just tell stories that sometimes kind of mean something and sometimes go a little bit off the rails too, which is why I like some, some absurd writing at times. And I think just also the world is so, to me, it feels so absurd if I actually think about any little thing like, or big thing, whether it's like how the world began, whatever your take on that is, it's probably kind of feels absurd. The fact that we are talking on Zoom, if you really think about it, can kind of feel absurd. You know, things like inequality, racism, blah, 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 it feels kind of absurd, but it also feels so normal too. And so I'm kind of interested because we just live in this world. So I think how people are navigating their emotional, psychological, physical lives with all these, these absurd and slash normal circumstances. I mean, so basically that's all just fascinating to me. And often it's not the big macro stories that I'm all that interested in, but again, kind of like the subtle, really subtle and nuanced moments that come into focus. When you're struggling to write for whatever reason, maybe too many ideas, not enough ideas, not enough time, what strategies do you use to get yourself to the page? Sometimes I just stop writing. I'm like, it's okay. You want to write, but you can't, and that's okay. And so sometimes when I do that, I just go back and taking notes. So it takes a lot of pressure off just to have a little notebook and take notes on anything you observe, think, whatever, anything that you feel compelled over here, anything you feel compelled to write down. And just kind of that fragmented writing really helps me feel kind of liberated from trying to write something that's coherent. Another strategy, because I, as I alluded to earlier, because I have so many things going at once and so many things that I abandon, sometimes I go back into my, some really old stuff that I never finished. Sometimes it's just a sentence or two or a paragraph, or sometimes it's like three quarters of a story that I abandoned. And sometimes I can get, actually get back in there and just write from that point. It can be hard too, because I'm like a different person at that point usually. And I don't know if I can get back into that voice, but it can be fun. And sometimes it, for me, it's just about finding some joy, finding a little bit of fun in the process. And that's how I, you know, get myself to actually move forward. And then of course, read, I mean, as everyone will probably say, any writer will say like reading of course helps. So sometimes it's just like, all right, take a week off from writing and just read until you feel something, you know, read until you feel you no longer like you're kind of bursting with readiness to put something on the page because you're so excited by what someone else has been able to do. And sometimes I like to hold myself back, not let myself write for, for a little longer, even when I have that feeling just to kind of capture it even more. So sometimes I like to deprive myself from writing just to, just to make sure I'm like really bursting to get there. What part of the writing process do you enjoy the most and why? Okay, good question. I think there's, there's like a few parts that I really enjoy with note taking. There are some times where I've been taking notes and then all of a sudden I'm realizing these patterns in the notes. And then it's like, all of a sudden I feel like I have a story kind of actually happening within the notes or at least the motifs for a story. So that's really exciting. That doesn't happen a ton, but I can think of a specific story some years back where it happened and it just, you know, I was looking at my notes and then all of a sudden I just sat down and wrote like seven pages. That was a, that's an anomaly, but occasionally something like that happens. I like stepping away from a story for like a year or two and pretending like I'm revising it, but not actually revising it. Um, <laughs> That's a fun part of the process for me. It's like getting into cold water, you know, you're at the ocean or something and you just kind of like dip your toe in and then you step away, then you put your ankle in and then it's your knee and then finally the sun has hit you so hard and you're so hot that you just run and jump in. So I kind of do that with my revisions where it's sometimes it'll be like a year, two, three, where I'm just dipping a toe, dipping a knee and then finally jumping in. And I do like that moment where I jump in and it's, and I make this, you know, I'm like willing to make the story messy. I'm willing to look at it more honestly. I'm over the emotional attachment to that original draft. You know, it's like, okay, I can actually crack this open 
make it messy. It wasn't perfect. And I can acknowledge that now. And, you know, now I can actually look at who these characters are, what the structure of the story is and, and start to revise. And then lastly, I'll say, like, I really like revising endings. Some of my stories, like, and by endings, maybe like, could be last paragraph or could be last, whatever, last scene or whatever. Some of my stories, I'll just rewrite the ending eight, 10 times before it's right. I'm really good at thinking that I have an awesome ending on a first draft. And that's that's why I really like getting to that point where I'm finally okay with acknowledging that, that it's not the right ending. But yeah, I often, while writing the first draft, think that I have the ending, this is it. This is the one thing I know about this story that's going to stay is this ending. And it almost never, never does, so. <laughs> That was such a great analogy. I'm glad it holds up. <laughs> I, th I think it stops holding up once you get into developing this character better. I don't know what that is in the when you're swimming in the ocean, but. <laughs> what revision strategies do you find most useful for your work? And what challenges do these strategies help you solve? I mean, again, I think the main thing is giving giving it time is my first strategy is really not rushing into revision. I, I guess that's like cliche at this point, but it holds true for me. I think the other strategy is revising, starting in the place that you feel you're like most willing to or most excited to rework or cut. Sometimes for me, it's just like getting to that point where it's like, okay, I can finally accept that this section just should be cut or this paragraph. And that opens things up quite a bit for me once I can take, again, that's kind of like jumping in, um, once I can take that step of making like a major revision. I don't know if I have like a lot of other strategies. I mean, I think it's just a lot of it feels like it becomes instinct at a certain point for me. I don't, I think like every story can be different. I don't always like do the same things for every story. I teach my students to make a revision plan. I don't do that. <laughs> uh, I, maybe I should, but I kind of have something in my head idea. Like I kind of have a sense of what is not working. Definitely getting some feedback from one or two trusted readers, I think can be helpful just for like, an impression. Yeah. I mean, I think the main thing is just the time solves the problem of being too excited about a first draft because it's always exciting when you finish a first draft. And if you're not excited by the first draft, typically for me, then it's it's never going to be good. It's like one of those stories that was just a writing exercise and is kind of flat. You said that when you're you're writing, you often are really excited about the ending, but that it almost never stays the same as the first draft. So yeah. do you have any specific revision strategies that you use or you ask your students to use for constructing endings? I don't necessarily have a strategy other than just try different things out um, if it's not working. I mean, a lot of times it's like kind of recalibrating the story because it's changed and then that ending is no longer. Well, some one strategy is sometimes it's just like cutting something. Sometimes it's just like cutting the last paragraph and it's look. So one strategy would just be looking for a better ending that already exists. And um, that could be cutting the last paragraph, cutting the last two paragraphs, cutting the last section. So that's one strategy. Another strategy, I guess, is just recalibrating your piece, going back and figuring out like what has changed and why this doesn't feel like the right place to end anymore. Like what, where should your characters be? And that's really kind of abstract, but I think that's, that's when I get into just like trying to write different endings for one of the stories in Partners and Strangers, the, actually the last story, Eggplant, or a, a Home for an Eggplant. That's one where I think I rewrote it like 10 times. I think I had a journal give me a nice rejection letter that was like, we really love the story, but the ending's not right. And at that point I was like, yes, they're definitely right. And I just kept rewriting that ending into something kind of felt right. It had both that element of a little bit of surprise and also the inevitability element that everyone's always talking about and looking for. So, you know, shooting for that, but not in like a super prescriptive way. What writers do you keep in your back pocket? Because I have like a terrible short-term memory, I'll just, especially now, since I don't sleep more than like two straight hours ever, um, I'll just name some writers I have read recently that I really like. Uh, Chimamanda Adichie, 
Uh, I love her work. Norman Rush's Whites is a collection I really love. There's a collection called Fairy Tales for Lost Children by a, a Somali writer. I can't think of his name off the top of my head that I read somewhat recently that's really interesting, really excellent. And it, it takes place in Nairobi where I, I had lived for a couple of years. So I'm particularly interested in it because of that. But it's really just really fascinating, really cool writing, interesting writing. There's a nonfiction book by Peter Orner, Am I Here Alone, that I read recently that I really like. And it's almost like kind of like taking a class with him. He like analyzes different stories, but also tells personal stories. And so you, it's like having coffee or a beer with him, but also like being in a classroom with him. So that's pretty interesting book. A novel I read somewhat recently that I really love is uh, Chemistry by Wakey Wang. I like Otessa Moshfeg quite a bit, especially uh, my year of rest and relaxation. And I kind of like comedic memoirs just as a genre. <laughs> I'll throw that in there. Some of them like Sarah Silverman's are just really, they're funny and they're, you know, well-written and uh, a nice little break from like literary fiction. Those are some. And then my memory doesn't go back. That's where it ends. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of the series. I, uh, I've i learned so much with just this brief conversation with you. And again, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a lot of fun. I love the series and uh, hope to make it to State College someday soon. So say hi to everyone there. Thank you.